saw a video recently about coffee and about whether coffee was actually healthy for you and you know there's I guess the implication was there was no science to say that coffee was that coffee was bad as if there's no science behind it for I don't really know if that's true and certainly I was watching one of Dr. Gregor's videos, Nutrition Facts, and he mentioned a bunch of things that coffee was connected to, like... Uh, what's that thing? In incontinence and a few other things, but... To me... The reason that I gave up coffee was not... And it's just like with most things in my diet... It's never really been a scientific research thing for me, it's not something that I go I go to the all the nutrition textbooks I don't really have the qualifications to do that and there's a lot of people online who show studies, show stuff they don't have the qualifications to really know what they're speaking about and they'll show studies to promote this and studies to suggest that and maybe they don't know how to interpret the study Maybe they don't have the correct science, professional qualifications, and all the rest of it. But to me, the reason I want to give up coffee, or the reason I did, and gave up tea, caffeine, is because it's highly addictive. <laughs> Anything to me that's really addictive indicates to me there's something wrong there. There's something not good about that. And that's why I wanted to give up coffee, because I didn't want to be... I didn't like the idea of having this thing that was a crutch. So if you're looking through the scientific evidence to try and find a justification to keep you drinking something you're addicted to, then I think that's an irrational thing to do, kind of a weird thing to do. But coffee's a stimulant, and I'm sure that if you add coffee to your diet, and by adding coffee you reduce the amount of calories you're eating in total, or by having coffee you're reducing the amount of something else you're eating or coffee's got antioxidants in it because it's a plant food all of these things I can understand it might have a positive effect and a positive benefit but let's just think about what coffee does it, it stimulates you to the point that you're staying up all night long like it's <laughs> it's such a powerful drug and you only realize that when you come off it and then you try it again or for me it was coming off coffee and tea and everything that had caffeine in it. A couple of years later having some raw chocolate brownies or something, co co you know, cacao kind of brownies at a raw food thing. Having a, bunch, having a bunch of all that. I never really thought about the caffeine content. But was absolutely buzzing, like staying, stayed up all night till six in the morning, like so electrically alive, <laughs> right? So focused, so sharp. And then obviously crashing later on, about six in the morning. Another time was when I was ill and this is quite a while back, had some paracetamol, some painkillers. And once again ended up staying up all night, like my like my whole consciousness was like jammed wide open. Like I could not fall asleep, I could not, when I closed my eyes, I was, I was, it was like my eyes were still open, like I was still so awake. And then looked at the packet of paracetamol and it had caffeine in it, and I had no idea that it <laughs> had caffeine in it. It is so powerful. And to me it's just so obvious that something's happening to your body, like the amount of adrenaline that must be getting pumped out when you're taking that is insane. So that's why I don't want that in my life. I don't want any justification for having coffee. Coffee doesn't taste good. Caffeine doesn't taste good at all. It tastes bitter. And I don't see any reason or justification for telling people that it's healthy and you know having it now and having it now and again is okay. Because no one's going to have it now and again. Everyone's going to do the same thing that everyone does, which is you're going to become addicted to it and you're going to have it all the time, it's going to become a crutch for you, it's going to be something that you're spending way too much time thinking about, worrying about, where's my next coffee, where's the coffee. You don't want to have these crutches in your life, 
So I try and read, I try and get to crutch free situation with diet and honestly fruits and vegetable fruit is just like the the most I've heard a lot of comments about isn't fruit addicting aren't people addicted to fruit no <laughs> it's just no addiction because there's no stimulation from fruit it's our natural diet it's like cows eating grass like anteaters eating ants like narwhals uh, or walruses eating mollusks at the bottom of the ocean fruit is just the the absolute perfect match for us everything about it is great and it's even like if you try and force fruit it doesn't work like everything about it just works out nice you need to be ready to eat it you need to eat it like slowly with kind of reverence all the other junk food and everything you just pile it in and it's, it's already basically been digested anyway because it's been cooked so it's been like broken down completely so it's just like putting like a pile of <laughs> like broken down food in your body so it's it's just like a lump in your in your body it just passes through whereas fruit's like alive it's like, it's like a communication it has to be ripe it has to be ready it's uh, it's a dance <laughs> so did, is this video about coffee? Yeah, so <laughs> so when it comes to coffee, but anyway, addiction free, no one's addicted to bananas. You know, you know, this is a discipline, this lifestyle. It is a discipline making the choice of fruit. You're making a choice, you're not like, I need to have fruit, I must have fruit. I choose fruit. I always, I, I want to choose fruit. I want to choose fruit first. Tim Van Orden's new thing, fruit first. And basically fruit, always, pretty much. So, caffeine, uh, well, like, I, I know, I, I think if you're looking to stay up all night and be really razor sharp, and maybe you need to drive or something in an emergency, I think it's, I think these situations it might be called for or it might be maybe worthwhile doing as a performance enhancing drug if you're an athlete maybe you want to use it as a performance enhancing drug if you're going into an exam and you want to be really sharp maybe you want to use it as a performance enhancing drug but if you're using it every day you know it's not gonna it's not really gonna have its effect so people use it every day become completely they need it to function and that's just something I don't want. I don't want to wake up in the morning and think I have to have a coffee. I have to have tea. I have to have my little this and that. It just seems so weak to me. It seems so bad. So choose fruit, fruit first, but caffeine. Do you need the science, really? To know that it's bad for you or not bad for you? I think some of these things, just, you just think about it a little and you go, well, I don't really need that in my life. So that's my thoughts on caffeine, thanks. Subscribe to this channel.